Okay, got it. You ready to record? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're recording. All right, and once again, just name and spelling position, please. My name is Bruce Banman, B-A-N-M-A-N, -A -A Mayor of Abbotsford. All right, perfect. Okay, first question for me is, oh, are you ducking the Bank of Media? No. No, I actually, thank you for asking me that. Um, no, I, you know, I have not been ducking the media. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Vancouver media most of the time requires me to go into Vancouver, and uh, my schedule is such that I have not had an opportunity to go in there. But uh, by no means have I been ducking them. Why do you jump at the chance to do positive, happy, fun, fun stuff, but when the serious stuff comes up, you seem to not be around? Uh, I am around, uh, and maybe the part of that is, uh, it's an interesting perspective, actually. Uh, much of my uh, calendar is set ahead of time, and so when things do uh, go uh, sideways, uh, so to speak, uh, I am usually already had other events that have been booked long in advance, so it makes it difficult to respond uh, at the moment. Okay, so I'd like to talk about homelessness and the ACS proposal first off. Um, you've repeatedly said that we need provincial assistance to solve the issues of homelessness. Are you concerned that the more than $15 million on the table for Abbotsford um, from BC Housing is now gone? Um, that's an interesting question, uh, and I have directed staff to do everything they can to uh, try and keep this money within our community. And if the money is gone, which some city councillors have said they believe it is, will the city provide funding for social housing in Abbotsford? Um, I have, uh, again, that's an excellent question. What I have done is I have directed staff to work on a strategy, uh, to, in, and that would be one of the scenarios within that strategy, and that will be coming before council within March. So you've said that BC Housing's consultation process, which Abbotsford used for its first two supportive housing projects, is flawed. Are you willing to work with BC Housing under the policies that they use for their housing projects? Absolutely. We always work with our partners, um, but I think that with uh, everything in life, there's always room for improvement. And uh, so I would, I'm more than happy to work with our provincial partners, BC Housing, and our local stakeholders to, uh, to, to work through a process. So is it fair for Abbotsford to criticize a process that's used successfully in communities around the province? Um, I think that it's fair any time uh, that there is a process that can be improved uh, to suggest ways to improve that process uh, so that you, have, uh, that you have more transparency and that you have better collaboration and uh, always room for better public input. Is the city getting an image of not trying to help the homeless? Um, I think that uh, if, we, if we were to be honest, um, events of late uh, in some people may have that opinion. I think what's important, however, is to look on the works that we have done and uh, we have actually reduced homelessness by 50 percent and I believe that we will see a report that says with regards to federal funding, uh, our homeless numbers are actually so low per capita we don't qualify for federal funding. There's been talk of a uh, project with Fraser Health, even that would be still years away. What will the city do in the meantime to address homelessness in Abbotsford? Um, well, again, I would go back to that we have directed staff uh, to come up with a strategy to deal with homelessness, uh, both in the short term and the long term. So you've been saying that stakeholders need to meet and the city needs to come up with solutions since the manure incident last June. What do you think can be accomplished now that hasn't been done in the past eight months? I think there's an opportunity right now where a community is clearly has a lot of passion about this issue. Uh, you know, we had one of the longest discussions and public hearings that we've had. Uh, and I think there's an opportunity right now to galvanize this community together uh, to do something. Everyone around the council table uh, wants to do something for the homeless. This wa And I think that there's an opportunity to get to achieve that goal. In what capacity? Uh, there's many different capacities with that. Um, that would be part of the strategies that will come out of what staff is proposing. Um, and I believe when you get many minds working together, solutions just magically appear uh, because you get that energy that's involved in coming up with a creative solution. So I believe that'll happen. But are, you, sorry. are you concerned that BC Housing is not black, blacklisted, Abbotsford, the future project? 
Uh, no, I don't think that VC housing will do that. Um, uh, we have uh, we have had two very successful projects with BC housing. Uh, this was a zoning issue, uh, not a issue against the homeless at all. So it's more of a case of right idea, but not the right place. And I am sure that BC housing will will, co will continue to work towards the common good, which is to help with homeless issue. So will the city evict camps that are currently located around the city? Uh, the city will continue uh, with any policy uh, that it has. Uh, we are, for instance, uh, camping overnight in public parks, uh, like many cities, is not allowed. And we will work one-on-one -on -one with individuals to try and find better places for them to be. But the TP has been standing on Gladys since the park was evicted back a few months ago. That is in contravention of a variety of city bylaws. Why hasn't anything been done there? Uh, I'm glad you asked me that. As one of the lessons we learned from uh, Jubilee Park is there is a process. And above all else, what the city wants to do is act compassionately and legally. Uh, so we will go through what procedures is re legally required uh, and uh, we are currently doing that and uh, we will see what happens at the end of the day. But what the city can't do is just forcibly evict people when they don't have the legal rights to do that. So are you currently seeking legal action to remove that camp? Uh, staff is currently working on a strategy to deal with the teepee. Uh, what will come from that uh, still remains to be seen. Why did you vote the way you did? Ah, that is a very good question. Um, that's a tough one. It's the toughest vote that I have had to do so far. It really is. Uh, at the end of the day, um, the C7 zoning is special and unique within the city. The C7 zoning is um, a contractual agreement, uh, so to speak, that the downtown businesses have with the city. They actually pay an extra tax. Uh, and. Unfortunately, I feel that in this particular case, um, there was not enough time to consult with the downtown businesses. And my grandpa taught me that the first handshake is the one you go with. Uh, and I believe that we had to deal with those individuals first. And if you're going to ask them to change, uh, you have an obligation to bring them inside the tent early on to help work with them. And what about council's decision to dedicate the road? long before it ever got to public consultation? Uh, that was always predicated on a rezoning. So again, this was a case of, uh, if we're going to dedicate the road, uh, I w that would be, I think, prudent for the proponents to work with the neighborhood to, to ensure that any problems and any questions and fears would have been dealt with. Unfortunately, in this case, that didn't happen. And as a matter of fact, I think uh, this, uh, this, this polarized a community where I think it could have been avoided. But it didn't happen due to BC Housing's rules stating that the ACS could not begin consultation until their proposal was ready. When they were given the go-ahead, they went ahead. Should they have gone against BC Housing's rules and consulted the neighborhood? Well, that's a very interesting question, and it uh, goes back to uh, my original point where I think that there's room for improvement uh, in the consultation process. So would it have been better to ACS have to have gone to the neighborhood without a finished plan or without drawings or ideas about how their project would go ahead? Um, I think that there is an opportunity where monies could have been saved uh, if they had gone with a concept. And there was also an opportunity to galvanize an entire community together uh, to help find a location. Um, in this particular case, I think that what has happened is uh, that, that we ended up with the ACS and the Downtown Business Association being on opposites, and I, I think it could have been prevented. Do you think that criticizing BC Housing's process will further alienate them from our community? I think that, you know, in all government cases, we're all looking for ways to improve what we do. Uh, the city itself uh, it looks every day at ways to improve what we do as, a, as, a, as an organization. And I think all organizations and governments uh, continually change how they modify how they do things. Unfortunately, sometimes it takes, uh, you know, we learn more from our failures sometimes than we learn from our successes. And uh, I think that we're all sort of looking at ways that we could all do better. So you believe BC Housing has to improve their process? Um, I think that if the process were different, uh, in this particular case, we may have had a different outcome. So in a press release that came out from the city after following the uh, decision by council on the ACS proposal, you state that any changes made to our bylaws are made for the greater benefit of the entire community. 
you then go on to say that the project was not the right fit for the businesses and the residents in the immediate area. The majority of the people at the public hearing spoke in favor and said the project was in the interest of the entire community. The downtown businesses and residents said it was not in the interest of their neighborhood. So did you make your decision for those in the immediate area or the entire community? Um, I think that there was many things upon which I made my decision. Um, the C7 zoning was part of that. We had a contractual agreement with that neighborhood, partly. Uh, and it's interesting uh, with regards to the majority. That depends on how you look at that. Uh, we, we heard many speakers that didn't even reside within Abbotsford. Uh, there was one woman that came uh, from the neighborhood that had 60 petitions, 60 names on a petition. Um, this was, by the immediate neighborhood, overwhelmingly rejected, in my opinion. Uh, so I based my decision on that neighborhood. But you said in your press release that the changes in the bylaws are made for the greater benefit of the entire community. So your statements contradict themselves. Not really. Um, because the entire community needs a vibrant downtown business core and it needs to have uh, neighborhoods that are supportive of this. So that is, that, is, that is not contradictory really at all. And what about the proponents from across the city who said that the most positive influence on the downtown would be getting homeless men into housing? Um, I think that that is an interesting perspective and it's an accurate one. It's where you get them into housing that is the issue. In this case, it was the right idea, wrong location in my opinion. So the press release goes on to state that council has decided that this particular amendment was not appropriate for the neighborhood at this time. The council was split down the middle and four councillors who said that this was the appropriate project and location, they've since attended a rally calling for solutions for homelessness and expressed their disappointment in the decision. So can you honestly say that council found that this project was not appropriate at this time? Actually, you're only partly correct because Councillor McGregor, who, who was also at that rally, um, I was unable to attend. I was invited by the uh, one of the organizers and told them I already had a prior agreement and was not able to do that. But what I did instruct staff to do was to ensure that uh, they had the ability to be heard and that there was uh, it was to be a peaceful demonstration and the city bent over backwards to actually make sure that their voices were heard and that they could have a protest. Okay, then I'll repeat my question. Uh, the press release said that council decided that this was not the appropriate for the neighborhood at the time. When four councillors voted for the project, can you honestly say that this project was not appropriate at this time? Uh, parliamentary rules in a tie uh, means that a tie vote at this particular time. I have one vote out of eight, the same as everyone else, and a tie vote actually means it is a, it is a failed it is a failed count a failed failed vote. Are press releases sent on behalf of the city as a whole, or are they sent out on behalf of the mayor's office? I'm sorry. Repeat the question. Are press releases sent on behalf of the city as a whole, or are they sent on behalf of the mayor's office? Uh, they are sent on behalf of the city as a whole. Generally, uh, I am the CEO of the, the of, of the city, uh, so I speak. As, I am the spokesperson and the figurehead of the city. And many times, uh, there are press releases that are made on behalf of mayor and council, uh, or on. City, city policies and city issues. So that would be a city, a city issue, a city, a city issue. So then, why did it not reflect the views on those uh, on council who voted for the proposal? I'm glad you asked me that question because the vote was actually a failed vote. So the decision of council, while be it split, uh, was actually to reject the proposal. Mm -hmm. But your justification cite the needs of the community, but that was actually for the businesses and residents in the immediate area. Some of your councillors did not agree with that opinion. And, but what all council will agree on is that uh, we need to get together and look forward uh, and find a solution to this. Is there a split in council now because of this? No, I don't believe there is. Um, I think that uh, in this particular case, um, for instance, Councillor Lowen and I have had some very heartfelt discussions. None of the councillors uh, uh, took this decision lightly. This was a passionate debate, uh, and unfortunately we just couldn't come to an agreement on this particular one. And as in many things in life, uh, one side is vi it will, will end up being victorious and one side not. Uh, but it was a, uh, every councillor voted with their hearts and with their integrity on this. When community services applied to the RFP <clears throat> put out by the city and BC Housing, its application was approved in the downtown site. If there was such a problem with zoning, 
why was the site approved during the RFP process? Why wouldn't the city have notified ACS about the zoning issue then? I believe I've answered that, and that was the land came up, uh, and it was always subject to rezoning, so everyone knew that ahead of time. So in September of last year, one of the homeless camps on Gladys was moved due to health concerns. Are there health concerns associated with the current camps on Gladys? Uh, we are monitoring that, and if such time a concern does come up, um, we will uh, have to make whatever steps are necessary to make sure that it's that it's safe and uh, and and clean. So safety safety issues will always come first, but we're monitoring that on an ongoing basis. So currently, no health issues have arisen. None that I'm aware of. What direction has the city given to police in terms of addressing the homeless and homeless camps? Um, you know, we have had many meetings where stakeholders, the police, all get together to work with this. And uh, the results of the summer are is that we need to be far more compassionate uh, and understanding when dealing with homelessness issues. It's incredibly complicated. Uh, there's mental illness, uh, there are addictions, and there are those that just have fallen through the cracks. And so we work with them one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and the police uh, work side-by-side -side, uh, with bylaws and stakeholders to try and uh, find places for people to go rather than just moving them from one place to another. So in terms of the Fraser Health proposal, you've now decided to ask Fraser Health for a land for a new project when it's the city's responsibility to provide land for supportive housing as set out by the MOU with BC Housing. Is it fair to turn down free land from ACS, then seek a donation from Fraser Health that they're not obligated to give, and it's the city's responsibility to provide? You know, I, that's, a, that's an excellent question. So let's go over some numbers. Uh, first off, Fraser Health Authority spends $79 per capita on mental illness and addictions. That's the lowest in the entire province, and it's the lowest in the region. Vancouver Coastal, to put it in perspective, spends $279 approximately, and our next closest to that, or the next lowest, is $140, which is the Interior Health uh, Health Authority. Um, so clearly there is a problem uh, with funding. And we will advocate with Fraser Health in the province to increase those numbers so that something can be done. Uh, but mental illness and housing is actually a provincial mandate. Uh, and uh, we're going to work with Fraser. Uh, there's an opportunity right now to work on that hospital site uh, for, for many issues, mental health, health and addictions being part of them. So the Fraser Health site would also require rezoning for supportive housing. It's located across from two schools, numerous health facilities, including what will be a care center for seniors. Do you think that there will be neighborhood opposition to this proposal? Um, I'm sure that uh, the, neighbor, the neighborhoods will have an opportunity to get out and speak. I do believe, however, that considering it was a former hospital site which dealt with many of these issues, uh, including mental illness, I don't think that there's going to be uh, the same level of, uh, of, of debate that there was in the previous site. So how will the concerns of that neighborhood be weighed against what you called the greater benefit of the entire community? Well, we'll have to see what the process brings at that time. Okay. So why did the city not offer land for a new project instead of suggesting that Fraser Health do so? Uh, the city actually came up with different proposals for the current one, that uh, the current uh, ACS proposal, and uh, they were rejected mostly because the city did not offer any funding to cover the additional operational costs that ACS would require. So is it an empty gesture to give land but not increased costs that are needed? I don't think so. Um, we were, and unfortunately we ran out of time to find alternative solutions. And at the end of the day, uh, ACS brought this proposal as it was originally drafted uh, for council's, to, to council's consideration. I wish that something was different and we could have worked out a better, better alternative, but uh, we, uh, at the end of the day, it just wasn't possible. But was it ACS's responsibility to find an alternative? Uh, the city offered all different alternatives. I think that there was an obligation for all parties to work together. Uh, it's just that there was a time constraint on this that I think put this one where it, was, it, it had to be voted on. But the city didn't offer any viable alternatives because none of them came with the funding that was needed by ACS to go forward. Um, I, at this particular point, um, there, I think we could probably have found ways to work that out. There just was not sufficient time. Is it not within your power to delay the timeline until a suitable solution is found? No, it's not. I'm glad you asked me that question. Uh, the timeline is a provincial timeline, not a city timeline. You got everything you need? Mm -hmm.
<clears throat> okay. Um, now off the, the topic, onto the naming rights of the arena. Yes. It's been five years. How come yes. there's no naming rights in this? What's going on with that? Well, what I can tell you is, is we have a couple of irons in the fire. Um, it's a little premature, but I think you'll be able to uh, hear, uh, hear some form of announcement with regards to that by summer. And then our buddy Curtis Pope gives you, gives you one last one. With your tournament office almost done, would you, as mayor, do anything differently? Oh, I think there's always things that you can do differently, but hindsight's always 2020. I think at this particular juncture, uh, would I do things differently? If I had a magic wand, um, I would have turned a truckload of chicken manure around in a real hurry, for sure. Um, but again, uh, you know, when you're going through things, you go through them. Uh, there's no crystal ball, and uh, I, you, you know, I, I, there's, I, I think that while there's lots of things perhaps you wish, it's pointless because things are what they are. You can't undo the past. And what do you guys want to do now moving forward? With regards to? With regards to the ACS proposal and the, the definite split that looks like in council. Um, I, think that that, I think that that's being overplayed, the split on that. Everyone around council wants to do something. This was, again, I go back to, this was about was it the appropriate place and the appropriate location, and that's what was being voted on. Council, I think, will be, uh, I, I, I know, will we'll look towards doing something in some other site, and I believe there's a chance to galvanize the community together to actually do some really good.